Hej Sam, mitt namn är Claudia och jag är student här på Linköpings universitet. Idag kommer ni få lyssna på två olika föreläsningar. Och sen mellan föreläsningarna kommer vi även spela upp lite gyckel här för er. Gyckel är då något som vi studenter håller på med väldigt mycket. Och det är när man tar välkända låtar så skriver vi om texterna lite. Så att de kanske passar in lite mer på studentlivet och vad vi gör som studenter. Um. Innan föreläsningarna ska jag också passa på och påminna er att ställa frågor i chatten under tiden så att jag sen kan ställa dem till föreläsningarna. Här är vår första föreläsare Donatella som är universitetslektor i tillämpad fysik. Donatella så kommer att föreläsa om luftföroreningar och dess påverkan på vår hälsa. Tack så mycket. Hi everybody. And welcome to this lecture on health impact of air pollution. Before starting, let me say some words about myself, where I come from and how I ended up here. My name is Donatella Puglisi and as said, I am a senior lecturer at the Department of Physics, Chemistry and Biology here at Linköping University. I'm Italian and I moved to Sweden eight years ago. In particular, I come from Sicily, a wonderful island in the south of Italy and in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, characterized by a lot of beautiful things. Of course, uh, beautiful coastal areas, uh, but also uh, a lot of uh, naturalistic sites, uh, archaeological sites, uh, nice food, nice weather. And uh, uh, the area where I come from, Catania, is also characterized by the presence of Etna, a magnificent active volcano, the highest active volcano in Europe, uh, named by uh, an UNESCO World Heritage Site. And I take the opportunity to warmly invite you to visit it as soon as it will be possible to travel again without any restriction. And if you will be lucky, you can also assist to some uh, amazing eruption. So when uh, I was a student uh, at school, I was uh, a girl full of interest. Uh, I tried with sport, volleyball, but didn't work out very well. But soon, uh, thanks to an intuition of my parents, uh, I discovered uh, what was, uh, without any doubt, uh, the first big passion of my life, uh, music. I started to play piano at the age of 10 and I continued for eight years when it was time for me to decide if continuing to work in a prof uh, play music in a professional way or go to the university. In the meanwhile, during that eight years, I had cultivated also other interests. I loved theater, both go to watch the show and uh, perform myself on a stage. I like uh, writing in a creative way and uh, I like uh, art, visiting museums and in particular visiting archaeological sites. So when it was time to decide, everyone was expecting that uh, I would have chosen something around art or humanities. Instead, I surprised all, including myself, when I realized that my biggest interest in that moment, what I wanted to challenge myself, was physics. Physics? How do you arrive there? In uh, that moment, I couldn't know, but uh, now, after several years, I can say that that was the right choice because I found my personal way to synthesize uh, all my interests, even if uh, in a very different way. Nowadays, I can say to spend a lot of my time every day on a keyboard, writing, performing in front of others, uh, admiring the beauty around me from the extremely small to the extremely big. Physics, for sure, is the discipline that has helped me to become a better observer, a better listener, and helped me to describe the surrounding. Probably it didn't help me to answer many questions, but for sure helped me to formulate questions, which is important. So, uh, in Catania, I graduated, I finished my study, and I continued with uh, 
post graduation or what is called the PhD. Then uh, I had the possibility to move to Como in the border with Switzerland where I spent the three unforgettable years of my life. And finally I had the possibility to move abroad and come to Lean Shopping. Well, the distance from home is more than 3,000 kilometers is a lot and of course I miss home. But uh, in these years I've also learned to develop a new concept of feeling at home. So in practice, how I ended up in research? Definitely I was attracted by this discipline. I loved uh, study, I loved lab life, uh, trying over and over again experiments, uh, fail, try again until uh, like arrived to the success. Uh, I was not too scared by spending uh, endless time on uh, studying and discover new things and uh, challenge myself. I wanted to explore also the limit of myself. Then uh, I thought that this was the best place to stay for having both a personal and professional development. But then uh, you could say that until here is something more poetic, I needed also something practical. And I was lucky enough to have also practical help. I got a scholarship that helped me to continue my study with the PhD. And then I got another scholarship to move to Como. And then I had uh, a, the job opportunity in Lean Shopping and another and another again. So uh, that's all. And here we, uh, let's arrive to the topic of this talk, health impact of air pollution. Maybe you are already there because uh, in these minutes uh, I talk to you and I spent, I consumed air. Humans, by their nature, consume air, depend on air. And uh, it is estimated that a person, during the course of his or her entire life, consumes four to five million of liters of air. This is a lot, but how much? Can we imagine that to include this in a volume? I tried this game, and let's imagine a cube 10 centimeter per side, there we can fit to one liter. Let's multiply that 500 million times. That is the air that we breathe in our life on average. So it's uh, really much. And uh, we see that, uh, can understand easily how important it is to have uh, good air quality. And it's a top priority requirement. If the air quality instead is poor, we are at the presence of air pollution. But why we need clean air? Of course, because we want to feel comfortable. Smelly air is not comfortable at all. But sometimes uh, or often, smell uh, can indicate also the presence of a danger. So we want to feel safe. And that uh, danger could be even harmful for health because it could indicate something that is harmful for our health or even carcinogenic. So. We want uh, to feel comfortable, safe, healthy, both indoors and outdoors. But uh, I wish to focus more on indoor environments, simply because we spend most of our time, up to 90%, which means uh, about 22 hours per day indoors. All the places where we work, study, live, sleep, have fun, are enclosed space. So it's important that such space are comfortable, safe and healthy. Air pollution has uh, um, both a physiological and psychological effect and uh, uh, can harm human health if they exceed certain levels. These levels depend on the pollutant, can be also extremely small. Sources of air pollution inside buildings include tobacco smoke, furniture, paints, vapors from building materials, cooking and eating appliances, or even household products for cleaning. Outdoor sources instead are mainly due to industrial emissions and motor vehicle exhaust. Let's keep in mind that 25% of uh, indoor air pollution come from outdoors, from uh, windows open to 
allow for uh, natural recirculation of air, ventilation systems, or also ourselves from our clothes, air, shoes. So that's, uh, that's is important. And uh, air pollution, may we define it? Yes, let's consider the atmosphere. It is a complex, uh, dynamic, natural gaseous system that is essential to support life on the planet Earth. An air pollutant is a substance in the air that can cause harm to humans and to the environment. Can be in the form of solid particles, liquid droplets, gases, can be natural or man-made, and can be primary or secondary. Primary pollutants are substances directly emitted from a process, like, for example, ash from a, a volcanic eruption, carbon monoxide from a motor vehicle exhaust, or sulfur dioxide released from factories. Secondary pollutants are not emitted directly, but uh, they form in the air when primary pollutants react or interact. An important example is the ground level ozone, which is a primary cause of photochemical smog. But uh, how can we measure the levels of air pollutants? The uh, unit to measure pollutant levels is called concentration. It is also the driving force which controls the rate of chemical reaction and uh, pollutant effects, such as toxicity. Concentration of pollutants may be expressed in a variety of units, depending on the pollutant, where it is located, air, water, soil, and what the measurement uh, will be used for. In air, the concentration is measured in volume fraction unit, that is uh, volume pollutant over the total volume. As an alternative, instead of measuring it by volume, we can measure it by mass, if we know the molecular weight of the substances that we need to measure. Typical units are percentage, 1 over 100, ppm, parts per million, 1 over 1 million, ppb, parts per billion, 1 over 1 billion, or microgram per meter cube. This is important, but there is another unit that is extremely important when we deal with air pollution, because uh, we have to keep in mind not only the, the level, so the concentration, of, but uh, how long we are exposed to the air pollutant. And uh, the concentration over time is called dose. Said this, but is such a huge problem air pollution? Numbers say yes. It is estimated that uh, one over nine premature death worldwide is due to air pollution. In Europe, air pollution is considered the single largest environmental health risk. The um, heart disease and stroke are the most common reasons for premature death attributable to air pollution, followed by lung cancer and other lung diseases. However, we don't need to think about the worst. There is also a number of other um, symptoms and uh, that are attributable to air pollution, and uh, we will see soon in the next slides. What I wish to, to say now that is the health effect on air pollution depends not only on the exposure, but also on the target group, on the vulnerability of people. And the most vulnerable people are kids, because their lungs are smaller and elderly, aside from uh, people with uh, pre-existing uh, health problems or uh, some uh, not that healthy behavior. Moreover, a large body of evidence suggests that people of lower socioeconomic class tend to live in environment with uh, worse air pollution. I mentioned that uh, we have uh, a wide range of symptoms that can be attributable to air pollution. Well, if you suffer from asthma, allergies or other respiratory problems, uh, headache, nausea, dizziness, fatigue, 
um, congestion of your sinus or uh, irritation of uh, your high skin, uh, throat, nose, or even depression. This uh, could be caused by bad quality of uh, your air, where you are. What to do then? First of all, it's important to identify all potential causes that provoke the issues, because uh, only in that way, identifying the cause, we can treat the problem and solve it uh, in a definite way. Otherwise, uh, we can work on the symptoms and uh, temporarily solve it, but if the cause is still there, then uh, it will build up again. So, let's identify the cause and let's treat the problem and solve, because uh, untreated air quality problem can provoke detrimental health impact. What else is needed aside from identification of pollutant source? Well, once we identify the source, we need strategies to abate air pollution levels. And also we need to adopt measures that are effective also in the long term to reduce exposure to pollutant levels. Who is responsible for this? For sure, expert in the sector, researchers, scientists, product developers, policy makers, governments, only them? No, everybody, also citizens are responsible, all of us is responsible in different roles and, and measures, of course. But now, let's have a look at Sweden. How is Sweden behaving? I wish to show you this uh, graph. It uh, uh, represents the concentration levels of uh, a substance called the particulate matter expressed in microgram per meter cube for emitted in all European countries. The red bar indicates the threshold limit, that means uh, the maximum value that uh, by 2015, all countries had signed up to remain lower. Uh, these data are from 2017. As you can see, three countries uh, didn't do well their homework, but uh, on the other side of the figure, Sweden is the best, together with uh, Estonia and Finland as uh, the lowest levels of this particulate matter. So what does it mean that we talk about a problem that is not a problem in Sweden? No, we are doing well and we need to keep doing well, because as uh, I said, uh, air pollution is a dynamic and complex problem, hair move. So uh, the problem is not uh, solved. We have to continue in this direction because uh, we are in the right direction and be a role model for uh, the other countries. Before concluding, let me give uh, two examples uh, inspired by what is happening during this year, characterized by several uh, dramatic events. We all uh, might uh, remember the start of this year with the shocking images uh, from uh, mega fires in Australia, that uh, fires burn out of control for months. Uh, smoke, a lot of smoke was uh, released into the air without considering the countless damage provoked. Before the fires were even contained, we were met with another threat that we are still facing across the world. And uh, I refer to the global pandemic due to the coronavirus COVID-19. We might comment a lot about this, but we have no time for this. I wish simply to point out a similarity between these two events that apparently are so different between each other. Both the smoke from megafires in Australia and the fast propagation of the virus through the air means a sudden degradation of air quality, even if in different distance ranges. This means also that it's necessary to find immediate solution to mitigate the problem until solving it. Science, technology, we see help a lot. And uh, a, considering our personal safety, personal exposure, solutions to protect uh, humans from breeding uh, contaminants 
contaminated air um, may include the uh, sensors or other monitoring systems or what we have uh, uh, learned uh, in the last few months uh, using uh, the face mask. So I mentioned science and technology that uh, play for sure a major role, but uh, it's not enough alone. We all need to, to feel uh, co-responsible and participate in this. So it's uh, really important to tune adequately our behavior and uh, we need to feel engaged and uh, believe that uh, each of us can make the difference. All together, we can make this planet cleaner and healthier. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you. Uh, you mentioned uh, face mask in the end. Are yes. you pro use of face mask and why? Thank you for this question. Yes, yes, I, I am uh, favorable to use a face mask uh, in whenever and wherever it is not uh, possible to guarantee the social distancing. I, uh, I think that uh, I cannot uh, ask the others to give me something that I am not uh, available to give them. And uh, um, this means that uh, uh, if I go to grocery shop, uh, commercial centers, uh, parties, uh, independent of the number of people, uh, that could be a dangerous place. Also, uh, we, we are uh, learning from news uh, that uh, it seems that an increasing number of cases is uh, from, uh, characterized by no or little symptoms. So it means that uh, many of us uh, think to be healthy, but they are not. So face mask in this situation could prevent in large measure the, the risk to be infectious for others. And uh, uh, so this is uh, why I, I think that it is a, a good idea to, to use uh, more face mask. Yes. Uh, we have also one more question that is have you encountered any difficulties while re researching physics? <laughs> this, uh, yes, uh, thanks you for <laughs> this question also. I would lie if uh, I say that uh, I didn't encounter any difficulty to, to study physics and to work in this field, uh, but uh, it was worth. I was uh, strongly motivated and I think that the motivation is the most important requirement that we need to have. If we choose something because we think that it will be smooth, easy, without any problem, difficulties, that to the best of my knowledge is a, a situation that doesn't exist. But if we are not scared to take the risk, mm -hmm. have, um, our challenges also fail but start again, try again, think in the longer perspective. If we believe in something, we will reach our target. So motivation, if you feel motivated towards something, just uh, follow your dream and don't be scared to encounter difficulties. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, before the next lesson, it will be a little jickle.